Hey guys, thought I'd do a gear review for you today. I've been doing a lot of Zippo videos, so I figured why not? I'll do a gear review of something I just got from Amazon, the Bushnell Bore Cider. Uh, I used it. I just got done using it to sight in my 597, my Remington 597. So I'm gonna go give a little overview and uh, my thoughts on it. So let's get right into it. This is what you get in the package. Here's the package. Uh, it's Bushnell. It says spend less time shooting and <laughs> spend less time sighting and more time in the field. Pretty plain package. Uh, you got instructions. You get the actual bore cider, you get the carrying pouch, and you get a whole bunch of these little plastic things that go on the end called arbors, and they're so you can use this thing with a whole bunch of different calibers. So what I'm going to move on to now is how you actually use it. By the way, in case anyone's wondering, this uses three watch batteries. That's that's how this thing's powered, and they're, they're the cheap kind. They're, I, I don't know the exact number, but they're cheap in case the batteries run out. So the, I happen to have the 9mm arbor on here right now because I already sighted in my 22, so I have the 9mm on next. And here's my 995. Empty. Chamber's open. This is how you would do it. You take your bore cider. Let's get this in camera. You take your bore cider, you stick it in the barrel, and then you actually twist it, and that arbor will grab on to the rifling in the barrel and it will make sure it's nice and snug in there. Now, I don't actually have it tightened down now. I just have it in there for the purposes of this video. I don't have it tightened down now, so I can ro rotate it and talk about a few things. But after you stick it in, you come to the switch up here, and you turn it on, and it shoots out a laser. Let's get a better shot of that laser. It shoots out a laser. You can see the red laser over there. And what you do then is you take your sights and you adjust for windage and elevation or leverage or however you would like to call it. And you make sure that the crosshairs of the iron sights match up with that dot and then you will be bore sighted. And that's basically how a bore sighter of the laser type works. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And I'll talk a little bit about what I actually think about this bore sighter. Okay, uh, we'll talk about price first of all. Walmart? Uh, yeah, 50 bucks at Walmart. It's okay, I didn't get it at Walmart. I hate Walmart anyway. <laughs> I got it on Amazon for 25 bucks. So, Walmart, big ripoff. Big, big ripoff. Uh, 25 bucks on Amazon. I got Amazon Prime, so I have free two day shipping. So, I got this whole thing for about 26 bucks because we live in New York and they have tax on Amazon, one of the very few states that does. Wonderful New York has tax on Amazon anyway. I got it about out the door for about 28 bucks. And. I sight, as I mentioned, I sighted in the 597, and I can't really say that I zeroed it in, because these bore sighters, and they're only intended to, but all they do is they get you on paper. So if you have a new scope, and you want to, uh, it's probably going to be inaccurate when you get it, so you want to get on paper so you're not wasting a whole bunch of time and ammo, it will get you on paper. So now, this, what I want to really mention now is this switch. This switch right here, it's a rotary switch, it says off and on, has quite possibly got to be the biggest piece of garbage I've ever seen in manufacturing in my entire life. It is absolutely, absolutely a terrible, terrible, terrible design switch. You rotate it to turn it on, and you'll see that the laser's on. Thankfully, most of the time when you rotate it to turn it on, it will flicker. As you see it doing right now, it'll just go off. At all, if you move the gun at all, the switch will just turn that laser off, and that is not good. That's a huge, huge minus for this thing. You get what you pay for, and I think it's pretty evident right there on this switch. This switch is absolutely, absolutely terrible. I don't know why they didn't just have a slider. And sometimes even when it's off, when I turn it off, which I feel like I'm going to break every single time I turn it off, it's absolutely terrible. But sometimes when it's off, it'll turn on. If you press this button, it'll turn on. It's just a horrible design switch. Well, as for the accuracy, like I said, it did get me on paper. My 597, which is over here, and again, I'll do the safety check. Nothing in the magazine. The chamber's all empty. Uh, it got it, it. The sight was not bad in the first place, but I just want to do a little review of this four sighter, so I used it, and it it did get it on paper, but not not right on. But I didn't expect that. I know you have to do your final zeroing in with actual ammo and at an actual range, but. Another major problem besides the switch with this is the laser itself. It may look pretty bright. It and There's that switch acting up again. But it may look pretty bright, but it is absolutely, absolutely a big pain to see it 
outside. Uh, it's an overcast day here. I did this sighting in on an overcast day and I was shooting at something reflective. I was shooting the laser at a reflective sign. Still ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously hard to see. It took a very long time to sight this gun in because the laser was so hard to see. And if you're going to do that, then why don't you just use the ammo? Uh, for example, another problem I had because this laser was so hard to see, I'm going to look, show you down the scope of this gun. And we can get in this scope. Let me get a nice shot there. There we go. But when you're looking down the scope of this, I don't know why I can't get a good shot of the crosshairs, but I'm sure you know what crosshairs look like. The the red dot will actually be covered up by the scope crosshairs. So that means that as soon as you're adjusting, if you're adjusting, you know, vertically or horizontally, as soon as the the crosshair, the line on the crosshair goes over that red dot, it's impossible to see. The the line on that crosshair is actually bigger than the dot it emits so when you have a line covering the red dot you can't see it so it's really really hard to tell where the red laser is and it was very frustrating sighting this thing in with this so uh, again you get what you pay for and bore sighters can go anywhere you know a couple hundred bucks and like I said this one was twenty five dollars but it seems like a twenty five dollar bore sighter so basically my final thoughts on this are it will get you on paper if you can take the time to deal with it and find the laser during you know, any bright day or a bright day, you pretty much forget about it. But even on an overcast day or inside, you might be able to see the laser when you're sighting it in. And it'll get you on paper, but that's about it. And, you know, it doesn't really live up to the Bushnell name. Bushnell is supposed to be very, very, very good with optics and things like that. But even when I'm looking through this manual, there's misspellings in this manual. It looked like it was looks like it was made by somebody whose English was not their their standard language, you know, their their native language. There's misspellings and I know everybody makes mistakes, but when you're in a company level this high, you think that you could have somebody spell check your work. Uh, this this manual is pretty bad. So again, don't really expect the Bushnell name with this bore cider, but it will get you on paper if you want to take the time to deal with this absolutely horrible switch and the dim laser. Other than that, standard bore cider. So go out and get it if you want a cheap bore cider. Uh, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.